Well, let's take a look and see what kind of uh, speed a reaction is going to happen at. We'll take a look at a specific reaction and um, we'll change some conditions to see what's going on to make that reaction speed happen at different rates. And this reaction is hydrogen peroxide breaking down uh, when you add a catalyst. This is, catalyst is made from one packet of yeast, seven grams of yeast, and 500 milliliters of distilled water. Um, the, the hydrogen peroxide solution, this is our uh, substrate. This is the thing that we're breaking down. We got 3% hydrogen peroxide from the grocery store and just diluted it in half to get 1.5% hydrogen peroxide. So you just mixed half of hydrogen peroxide and half water. Yeah, and did you ever wonder why is it in a brown bottle? That's going to be a good question for them to, to address. Hmm, something to look into. Okay, excellent. So here's our solution. It's already pre-mixed. I'm just going to get 20 milliliters of that hydrogen peroxide and put it in the bottle. You'll notice that it's this. I have a um, magnetic stirrer here. My yeast suspension is being continuously stirred. If I did not have a magnetic stirrer for this, we'd have to stir this by hand before we got any of that sample. But the first run, we're just gonna look at the natural background spontaneous decomposition of hydrogen peroxide without putting an enzyme in it to speed it up. Okay. Go ahead and grab 20 milliliters All of right. hydrogen peroxide. There you go. Thank you. Okay. And no enzyme, this is just substrate. And then we're turning on. So now that it's stirring, what I'm gonna do is go over to my SparkView software and we will start that up. I've already taken the time to uh, calibrate it through the live data view here in the bottom left, but I'm just ready to start measuring. So here we go. And how long will we measure this just to follow? Uh, three minutes is good. Um, and the sample rate, I think it's uh, one hertz, yep. right? That means one sample per second. It's a bit loud. And that's but... the default, so that's an easy thing to set up. All right, we'll watch this go by in quick motion for the next three minutes. Now that we've come to three minutes, we'll slow the stirring down and we're going to stop the data collection. You're gonna to want to find out how much oxygen has been released in this reaction. And the easiest way to see some of these high and low points is to see it spread out using the scale to fit. Okay. And then your job is to go in and use the data to find out how fast that rate is of the oxygen coming off. How might they uh, look? How might you find a value for a specific data point on in SparkView? So to find the top end uh, data point or the low end data point, so you can determine that rate, uh, we'll use the coordinate tool that should show up. You've got a couple of ways to move that. You can, if you feel like you're at a good spot, just to move it a little bit using the left and right tools. And you can then find what the lower end in this case is. Um, but then you use the second um, coordinate tool, or you can put that coordinate tool up to where the highest value is and find the difference between those through your own math. Okay, are we ready for the second run? Let's do this. Okay, so we got our control run here with no sub, uh, no enzyme rather. We looked at our background decomposition rate of hydrogen peroxide with no catalyst. So I need to clean the beaker so that I can recreate the original condition as much as possible. There's some water. I'm gonna rinse this as best I can. This is just tap water, or rather it's distilled water, excuse me. And one more just for, and spill a little bit. And I'm gonna pull out the magnet. Well, she's cleaning that up. I'm going to go ahead and measure out another 20 milliliters of the peroxide. But this time we're, when the, the uh, substrate is in the container, we're going to add the enzyme, two milliliters of enzyme using a graduated pipette. So I can quickly deliver the, cat, the catalyst into the container 
and put the sensor on. And as quick as we can, we're going to start data collection so we don't miss anything if anything happens. Okay. I'm going to double check to make sure that I have 20 milliliters. And I can see I'm a little low because it's not the bottom of the meniscus is not quite to the 20. So let's add a couple more drops. There we go. I can see the bottom of the liquid solution there is um, showing a 20. I'll give that to you to be able to measure these in here. Okay. I already got the magnet in there, so we're good. Okay, we're gonna try to get this ready to quickly deliver that catalyst and then I'm gonna close it as fast as possible. Actually, Roger, would you be able to slide this down as quick as I Absolutely. can? Absolutely. Great, because that'll help out. Should I start the data collection? Um, let's wait after until it's, it's closed. It's done. Okay. Right. okay. So now we're gonna add the catalyst. And I'm gonna get two milliliters. You ready? I'm ready. Let's start the stirrer. Ready, set, go. Oh, go ahead and start. Let's start a second run. Cool. And again, we're going to run it for three minutes. We'll speed up the video for you. All right, you can see that the oxygen is, is coming off nicely. We're going to slow the stirring down, and I am going to go ahead and stop that collection. Um, if you want to be able to compare these two directly, you can turn both runs on by just putting a check mark into that same system. And at this scale, you can see quite a drastic difference between these two reactions. Again, you're going to then take two points and use the uh, coordinate tool to find out a low value and a high value from which you can determine your rate. If you need to go back and do some analysis on run one, just make sure that you move the red box that's around the pink diagram for run two onto run one. You should be ready to start and do your lab. Okay, good luck. Thanks.